Hello, my name is Christopher Donald. Welcome to my channel. And I'm going to be doing a demo today on making a flat lidded container, a flat lidded um, so we're. Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Christopher Donald, and I'm going to be doing a demo today on making a uh, basically a jar or a uh, baking dish. Probably more of a baking dish, frankly. And uh, this is going to have a flat lid with a knob. So I'm going to be talking about flanges, how you throw a flange, and how you throw um, a flat lid, um, and how you fit it onto it. So this is going to be the first part which is going to be making the actual body of the piece. So I'm going to go ahead and get that clay stuck down on the edge. And this is fairly stiff clay. I want to make a piece that's a little bit rounder. So I like using a stiffer clay for it if I can. And as for centering this, I'm basically, I coned it up one time after getting it stuck down, and then I'm just going to get that flattened down. Stiff clay, I can actually slow my wheel down and stop it. I can actually stop a Brent too, but leverage. All right, so make a hole in the center. Open that up for whatever I want my final floor diameter to be plus um, about 20% because you want to be able to compress this floor really well with your sponge and then with a wooden tool. That's going to help prevent S cracks, warping, and other problems down the road. So if you make it a little bit wider than you need and a little bit thicker, you can compress it. And then, because it's a little bit wider than you want, when you go to do your first pull on the wall, you won't push the foot in too far. A common problem that people have is that they only open up the floor as wide as they want it when it's all done. And then when you put force at the bottom of the wall to do your first pull, you end up kind of pushing the floor in a little bit. And then it gets kind of a rounded, pinched in kind of a look to it. I'm going to make sure that I'm cleaning my hands as I go. Clean hands with water are slippery. Slippy hands are sticky. There's two points where you can center this clay. The first point was as a lump. The second point is now with the collar. So I'm going to center this collar. It's actually easier to center the collar than it is to center the lump because you're centering less clay. And you can kind of get your hands around it in a different way than you can when you're trying to center the lump. So strangely enough, it is much more important that you center the coil than the initial lump. When I'm doing the lump, I mostly care about it being stuck down onto the wheel head. Um, centered is nice, but if I don't get it centered at that stage, I don't care all that much. Most people tend to throw the clay off a little bit when they do their first, um, when they open it up. So having a perfectly centered lump doesn't gain you too much. All right, I just trimmed a little bit of clay off of the underside there because I wanted to be able to get my fingers under the clay for my second pull. And I'm going to keep the rim of this fairly thick, compress it each time when I get to the top because I'm going to do a split rim lid. All right, and I'm leaving this on the thick side as well because I'm going to be bowing the shape out. I'm going to go ahead and start shaping this before I trim any more off of the bottom. 
once I start going out, I don't want to use a whole ton of water. I'm going to wipe some water on the inside. And I'm letting my finger on the inside apply more pressure than my hand on the outside. My hand on the outside is more guiding it. Like I said, this is stiff clay, so it's actually going to absorb water a little bit quicker. Tendency to dry out. Sponge on the outside is going to help a lot with that. So I need to make sure that I'm wiping enough water on the inside. My fingers don't stick. All right. Now, before I push this out anymore, I'm going to trim the bottom. Let's take that bevel off. That's clay that's going to get trimmed off later anyway. I might as well trim it off now while I can still recycle it really easy. And this makes it so that my fingers can get right to the bottom. Then I'm going to compress this wall. That's going to make it easier to get the clay to stretch and support itself as I stretch it out. There we go. The wall's nice and compressed. My wheel head a little bit. Recompress the rim. All right, clean my hands. The rest of the shaping is going to be done with clean, dry hands. Get down to the level. Speed. Get down to the level of the pot so that you can see the curve as you're pushing it out. And this is going to be pretty curved towards the bottom. That's very hard to do entirely on the wheel. So I will be trimming a little bit on the bottom part of the curve. Pretty common. And I'm going to use a metal rib to finish compressing this outside. I can bend the metal rib into a curve. So it will compress a little bit more in a curve than the flat wooden rib can. Kind of hugging the shape of the piece a little. And if you get down low, you can really see it. Now, the reason I'm not using any more water is that I want this to be able to support itself. I want to push it out as far as I can and have it still support itself well. Too bad. All right, so this type of flange is a split lip. What I'm going to do is make sure that this is nice and compressed and centered. You do need a rim which is pretty even to do this well. Um, you can do it on an uneven rim. Uh, goodness knows we all have to learn somewhere and I was in college. I, I did plenty of split rims where it was kind of cattywampus when you do it. But essentially what you want to do is use a wooden tool. And you can split these with your fingers, but personally, I think the wooden tool makes it a lot easier. I can apply more pressure in a smaller place. 
with the wooden tool. So I'm supporting the underside of the rim with my fingertip, my left hand, and then I'm using the point of the wooden tool and I'm literally splitting the wall. So I'm cutting it in half and pushing part of it down. I can use the round part of this to kind of help flatten out that flange that I've created from splitting the wall. And I can use the other tool that works really good for this is this um, this wooden rib. I just really like this one for being able to get right into that corner perfectly. There we go. And I can use my sponge. Clean up that inner part of the flange. Clean up the top edge of the flange. And what you're going to want is generally you want the depth of the flange to be at least the thickness of the flat lid that you're going to be putting on here. I actually think this is a little bit too high or it's, it's not deep enough yet. So I'm going to continue and I'm going to push it down a little more. There we go. That's what I want. Because I'm going to want my lid to be able to kind of tuck down in there. Just compressing the inner part of that flange. Go. And I can clean this up a little bit further later when it's leather hard. Very hard to do that right now when it's so wet. You, you have to kind of accept that there's going to be a point of diminishing returns as far as cleaning it up when it's this soft. Get it as close as you can. And then you need to walk away from it. Let it stiffen up. Deal with the rest of it later. If you want to make it absolutely precise, that kind of precision is going to come a little bit more easily when you trim it rather than doing it at this stage. I would recommend throwing a piece like this on a bat so that you don't cut it off of the wheel head right away. It will stay centered on the bat. And then that way, when you go to clean up the flange, if you decide to by trimming it, it's perfectly centered and it'll be a lot easier to clean up. All right. So I basically am wanting. I think I'm going to have to clean this up. I kind of want to get rid of a little bit of this here. Um, and that's going to be way easier to do later. So I'm just going to stop fussing with it. And we're going to um, use our kind of uh, video time to our advantage here. I'm going to leave this turning, put a fan on it, let it stiffen up to the point where I can trim that flange. We'll come back. I'll show doing that. Um, I'll show uh, trimming the back side of this. And then we'll um, show throwing the lid, putting a knob on the lid, and then trimming that to fit. We're going to do a little time lapse here in between. I'll be back. All right, I've been uh, letting this just dry for a little bit. And now it is dry enough that I can trim this tiny little bit off of the edge here that I didn't like. And I'm going to go ahead and Get that removed. Often it's just easier to leave things until the clay is at the right stage rather than trying to force it too early. There's just like a little bit of like a undercut here that uh, yeah, I guess I'm being fussy, but I just wanted this to have a real unbroken kind of a feel to it. And that was getting in the way. There we go. Okay. I use my just my finger to round off this top edge. I don't really want to leave that too sharp. Might need to trim that down a teeny little bit. I can trim the inside of the flange so it's perfectly flat. And you should always get the flange completely done before you go 
uh, fitting a lid to it. It's not important that you make the lid at the same time that you make the piece. Use a surform to just flatten this off a little bit, remove a little of the X, a little bit of this thin edge so that I can make it a bit rounder. Don't like quite how sharp that is. It's going to be, definitely be a problem. Later on, I'll use a soft rubber rib to just round that back off again. And my finger on the inside. A lot of times the best tool is just your own, your own hands. There you go. That's a little bit less razor thin than I kind of trimmed it to. Okay, now that I've got this all done, now I can cut this off of the wheel. Just wanted to do that while it was perfectly centered. It really does make a difference. And I'll cut this off the wheel head. Now, like I said, you can just do this on a bat. I just don't, um, this wheel isn't um, tapped for bat pins. So I always just let things dry on it for a little bit. If I was doing a lot of throwing work, I would actually use a different wheel. I've got one that has bat pins. This one's just a little bit better for doing demos. Okay, and now I can trim the underside of this. I'm going to want to be a little bit careful. This rim is on the narrow side, and this is a little bit, a little bit soft. So we're going to let this just turn and dry again for another couple of minutes, and we'll come back and trim this. All right, back again. So I'm going to take a juice cap, put on the bottom of this, and just use a little bit of water. And that's what I'll use to hold this onto the wheel head. So I can trim this. And I'm basically squaring the bottom to the rim. So if the rim was a little off when it was made, this would actually fix it. Because the rim is now being squared to the bottom. So that's this is why I suggest to people that they don't bother um trimming rims it's kind of no point keep the rim the way it is and fix it at this stage and this is still a little bit on the soft side so i'm just gonna take it easy if you have a fairly sharp trimming tool then you shouldn't have to apply too much pressure when you're trimming so if it's a little on the softer side, it shouldn't make any difference. I just want to get that middle part a little bit closer. And then generally you trim point flat. So I'm going to start by using the point. It's less likely to follow any kind of inconsistencies. And I could also use the surform like I used on the bottom. Anytime I find where there's like a little bit of something that I think the ribbon tool might want to catch on or follow, I'll just use a surform. Great tool for doing trimming. See how easy and quick this makes it. I bump it off, I just tap center it back into place. I prefer to trim without lumps just because it's one less thing to clean up, frankly. Clean off my metal rib here. We'll clean them by, just by rubbing it on canvas. And I actually bumped the bottom a little bit uh, when I First flip this over, so I'm actually using the metal rib to kind of just push the bottom into being straight again. Rather than trimming a bunch of it off. 
Actually, it doesn't need to be trimmed, it just needs to be flattened. And anything that's being left as a flat bottom, uh, you actually want it to be dipped in very slightly and concave. I went ahead and did that. Now I'm just finessing the last of this curve. Go. This is a really dense clay, and it does have a tendency, it's kind of almost like porcelain that way, where it does have a tendency to want to grab if your trimming tool isn't quite all the way sharp. And I am ashamed to say I've been doing a lot of trimming with this guy, and I need to sharpen him. All right, I'll go ahead and use the metal rib as a scraping tool. Clean this up. Removes the marks from the surform. The outside of this is going to be unglazed, so I'm actually going to make it fairly smooth, and I'm not going to worry about having a spot where, um, like, I'd have a quarter inch clean for glazing it. So it will not have glaze on the back, on the outside of it, or on the bottom. Make no difference. But if this shape was going to be glazed, I would want to consider that when trimming the foot. I'd probably leave myself something to make glazing a little bit easier. Let's use the edge of my finger here to compress this. And round that right off. All right. And I forget. Actually, sign this thing. Often I totally forget. Okay. Go. Okay. It's got a teeny little bit bunged, but not too bad. So that's pretty much what I was going for. Check it out, make sure I got that curve right. Looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna wrap this up, set this aside, and we're gonna throw the lid right back. All right, let's see how many edits we can make this video out of. Um, so I've got my clay for throwing a lid, and the idea is you just need the lid to be larger than you're going to want it, so you can kind of trim it to the right size. When you're throwing, don't try and throw it so that it's exactly the right size. Um, that pot was already made. It's already leather hard. I'm going to need to make this soft and then let it dry down to leather hard, which will make it shrink. If you're trying to fit like a wet lid to a leather hard piece, that's going to be really hard. So let them both get leather hard and then fit this to that piece. That's going to be a lot easier. All right. So let's go ahead and get this connected here. And stiff clay again. Before you start, just make sure it's in the middle. Make sure it's stuck down really good. Make your life a lot easier. There's no shame in just getting it stuck down to the wheel head. First thing I want to do is get that edge stuck. And make sure the whole thing is stuck really well. And then, because I know I'm going to want to make a knob for this, I'm actually going to go ahead and just take a little piece of this clay off. And this will be what I make the knob out of. So I just um, add a small section of this here. Use my wooden tool, just take that right off. Put that aside. All right, so when you're throwing a lid that has a knob on it, you don't want to throw the knob as part of the lid. The reason for that is because you are going to be unable to compress 
underneath the knob. All right, so if I had split this and just left a, a lump in the center and then thrown a knob there, then it wouldn't be possible for me to compress the clay right in the center where that knob is going to go. I actually want to throw the flat, compress the whole thing really well, score, add the piece of clay that the knob is going to be made out of, and throw the knob separately. That way, I get kind of the best of all worlds. I get to compress this really well, and I can still have a thrown knob. I'm going and just using a rubber rib that's going to let me compress this even more after I've already done it with my sponge and my finger. Go. Just made sure I made it a little bit larger than I'm going to need. Trim off that extra little bit on the edge. There we go. Now I'll use my scoring tool. And I'm just going to score the middle here. Add a little bit of water. Get the piece that I set aside earlier. Score this. Connect that really good. And when you're throwing a knob, uh, usually you're going to have to up the speed of the wheel a little bit. The closer you get to the center of a rotating circle, the slower it actually turns. So I'll turn up the speed a little bit. Going to get this lump centered. Go. Same thing as I did on the wheel head. Get that edge stuck down really well first. Then you should be able to center the clay a little bit easier. All right. So then I'm going to get the basic shape that I want. And I'm going to compress, leading up to it. Use this tool to help establish the stem. And then I kind of want to go for something a little organic with this guy. Get that cleaned up. Go, go, and then I'm going to turn that speed down a bit. Just. And uh, there we go. I just want to do something a little more fun there. Just a normal flat knob. Uh, but let's give it a little bit of definition. Frame it a little bit. I can find my tools. Where do I put my tools? There we go. There you go. Just a little little detail there. All right. So I'm going to let this dry. Actually, go ahead and let it rotate. And I'll let this dry. 
uh, to, I need it to get to leather hard. I'll wait till it's early leather hard before I actually even slice it off. And then um, you see how quick it dries. Sometimes if the this knob part dries a little bit too quickly, I'll flip it upside down onto a trimming chuck and let it dry from the top side um, and so this doesn't dry as fast. Or if this starts to dry up too much, you can cold wax it or even put a little piece of plastic over it. All right, I'll be back. All right, so we've got a dried lid, leather hard, and we have a leather hard pot. So we're going to do a quick measurement of the diameter of this piece. And I prefer to use like a caliper or something to doing a strict measurement. Go. Using a ruler isn't quite as effective. And go ahead and just so it's pretty much dead on. There we go. I can use this as my trimming chuck. Um, I can actually use a standard trimming chuck. I think to myself, do I have a standard trimming chuck anywhere around? All right, this is a trimming chuck. So it's a um, ceramic piece that's been bisqued. And um, you can use it either end, depending on how wide you need it to be. I dipped it in a little bit of water before I tap center it. That way it won't absorb too much moisture from the clay that I'll use to hold it onto the wheel head. There we go. Got it tap centered. Then I just want to take a coil. Hold this down with my hand while I fasten the coil in place. And if you're going to be doing this for any length of time, uh, what I like to do is actually take and put some water in the inside of the throwing chuck or the trimming chuck. And then that way the water will kind of keep this coil damp uh, and it won't dry out and have it pop off. Okay, so I've got my lid here, and this is just, oh, it's just a little bit more of that water out there. It just fits the height for that knob. And I can tap center the lid on the chuck. Sticking up there. Yep. Sometimes if you pick it up and drop it down, it's easier to center than tapping it. So I've got that centered on there, and I checked to see how large it was. It's a little bit bigger than I need. So one nice thing about a chuck is that it's centered, and so I can kind of take this off and put it back on this guy, and I can test the fit. So I still need to take off another 3 sixteenths, I'm going to say. There we go. Now, this is wetter than the pot. Not by a bunch, but it, it's a little bit wetter. So, I actually want to make this a pretty tight fit because the lid is going to still shrink more than the body of the pot. If I make this a, a nice snug fit and then let it sit up overnight, the two of them will equalize. And then um, 
if it still needs a little bit shaved off, I'll do that when they're the exact same moisture content. When we did a lot of this sort of thing, we would simply do a couple of them at the same time. And usually you'd trim it down and it would fit one of them. And then you'd grab the one that didn't fit anything and you trim that one down a bit more. It actually saved a little bit of time. And you're trimming for, I uh, need just, just shy of just more than a 16th off of this. It takes a couple seconds to tap center it back on each time. Okay, right, let's test that. Pretty close. Just a smidge. One of those things that I routinely tell my students, don't be impatient about the last 10%. This is, this is what separates you from work that isn't as successful. You just gotta be willing to spend a little bit of time on it. Be willing to put the time in, make it right. I'm going to optimistically hit this with a rubber rib. I thought that I am right there. Didn't need much. See if we get lucky. There we go. Pushing that too bad. Let's go ahead and I'm going to pull this. Ooh. Uh, actually, let me burnish this real quick before I pull him off. Burnish the top edge of this. And this got bumped just a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and smooth that with my finger. That's better. All right, now I'm going to bump, take this off. All right, just remove my chuck. Speed you off the water. Dry that off real quick. Get this far without messing it up. I'm just messing it up now. All right. So this is actually I think pretty good. He's a tiny little bit loose, and there's actually a kind of funny fix for that. We're gonna. This guy tap centered. And then I'm going to use a wooden tool and I'm just going to push this in slightly. There we go. And I would actually, I, I would call that. that. That is pretty darn close. And 
especially with a, a jar like this, it's not it's not a teapot. It doesn't need to be so close that you know, like you can pick it up and it doesn't fall or anything. I mean, this is supposed to be a flat lid, um, and uh, a little little smudge in the bottom there. So you need to turn your back. So if I make it too tight, you would definitely not be able to glaze it. I'm not sure if I'm going to glaze this one or not. I've been doing kind of a series of unglazed ones. So this might be left um, just bare. We'll see. But anyhow, so that is how you throw a form, make the flange, throw the lid, add the knob, trim it to fit, and it's all done. Uh, thanks for joining me. If uh, you like what you've seen, uh, please uh, throw me a like. Um, subscribe to my page if you'd like to be alerted for when new content drops. And um, I will see you back here again soon. I, I will definitely do a couple other types of lids. I just really like starting with the flat lid because um, it's, it's, a, it's a nice, satisfying one and usually not too complex. But we'll do some double flanges and some other stuff down the road. All right. Take care. Thanks for joining me. See you soon. Bye.